Okay, hello. What's good, unapologetic gang? Okay, so I'm in Guadalajara. I'm actually in Centro. I'm going to take you guys on a walk a little bit later, but you know, I've been here for like a week. I went to Puerto Vallarta. I came back to Guadalajara. I've been living here in Mexico for like one year and five months. And I don't know, I'm just, ha I, I'm back. It's like being in your first love again. Uh, it's just rekindling everything and getting to know more and more about it is just like so exciting. And uh, I was living in San Cristobal de las Casas in Chiapas. And Chiapas, like I'm, I've showed you guys, is great. And Puerto Escondido in Oaxaca, I love very much. But, you know, the thing is, um, I had to leave those places. Paradise is only so good after a little bit, and then you literally have to go because then your daily problems become your daily problems. And so that's stressful sometimes because it's kind of like, we need to leave, we need a break. You know, I've talked a lot about this in my co-working, co-living situations. I like to have a separation between my work, where I'm sleeping and where I'm eating and what I'm doing in my work. So that helps me a lot to have the mental break. So yeah, I had to get out of San Cristobal because um, yeah, I feel like I needed more. And then everything here in Guadalajara, I just have more. I was I was in uh, Mexico City. I showed you guys my walk around Mexico City. And it's just been a bit... Mm, it's been okay. It's very expensive. But here in Guadalajara, things are much cheaper. I came and I, I go always do a search for all the vegan food that I can find. And I want to make sure it's a mission of mine to, like, um, you know, check out the different vegan spots. In San Cristobal, there's food there, thank goodness. But here, I'm just kind of like, I can eat everything. In the park, There, like, the entire park in front of the cathedral is dedicated only to vegan food. Saturdays and Sundays. Now, granted, it's, like, a little bit in front of Universidad de Guadalajara. So it's always nice to have like, you know, college students come with different demands. So a lot of businesses, vegetarian, vegan businesses are here. But the food is relatively cheaper. So in Mexico City, I was seeing it was like 130 pesos for just a hamburger and hot dog. I mean, it's just kind of like, there's only so much of that I can eat in a day. But here it's all fresh fruits and vegetables and it's Mexican food. So that's already like a plus. Things are much cheaper than they were in where I was living in San Cristobal, which is kind of like what I found matching prices for rambutan and mangoes. Because usually I would get a bag of eight big mangoes the size of my hand for 30 pesos. And here I'm like finding that equal. So the sale in um, in San Cristobal was 15 pesos for a medio kilo of rambutan or 30 pesos for a kilo of rambutan. So now I found it, it was like 10 pesos every like, uh, like a fourth of a kilo, which is 40 pesos. I mean, that is still really good compared to like 15, pe 15 rambutan for 50 pesos. And people are walking around selling this like, so if you don't know what rambutan is, I recommend you really try it. I'll have to like show you in a different video, but it's seriously one of my favorite fruits. And uh, the people here, so immediately once I got here, I was just kind of like taken <gasps> because everyone is so attractive. Everyone is just very attractive here and everyone's tall and dark and there's such a diversity in um, Mexican culture here. Tall Mexicans, very like blonde Mexicans, redhead Mexicans. Usually I see more of that like in the north, but here just kind of like such a mix of everyone. And um, there was there's a blend of uh, like travelers as well, or people who have come from other places. So French and Italian have a big um, kind of presence here. And especially in the university, there are so many educated people here 
that um, like the music as well is so everyone likes to listen to different types of music and I find I'm like really enriched a little bit more and it was a little bit something like I wasn't sure I was missing but I feel like I have um, again I could just go on and on about the food and uh, there's like more and more streets to discover there's a lot of people that I just loved up at the use. you know I first got here six years ago and I stayed on one street I was here for about four or five days and I wrote this in my book something to show for it you can find it on Amazon and I was just so overwhelmed and loved it so much I think I'm about to get emotional. And now that like, it's like I'm back here and it's just like so much love for this place. Or maybe it's the food. I must be hormonal from the buffet. <laughs> but uh, it, it was just, it's just so cool. I just, I really love it here. Everyone's just like, I, I really love the people. I love uh, culture here. Everyone is so, um, it's still very Mexican, uh, you know, so we say good morning to each other it's very family oriented and um, yeah I think this is this is a really nice place to stay for a few months I met a lot of people and everybody's like I think I'm gonna move to Guadalajara there's so many different neighborhoods here like there's Zapopan which I would like a lot it's just kind of like malls and suburbs a little bit a lot of people end up working for huge companies they have like Oracle here they have a lot of tech companies here and so it's it's a nice little hub it's a great place I don't necessarily know about the um, co-working spaces usually I'll just open up my laptop and just sit down and like I feel like I can just work anywhere right now and I was feeling like that in San Cristobal but the weather here is amazing it's summer it's still rainy it's rainy season but I just feel a lot happier here and it's almost like almost a smaller piece that was missing from what I had. Now granted right now I'm just I'm still doing the whole nomadic thing uh, and the um, so nomading in one place to see if I actually like it because one of the biggest mistakes is finding food you like and just staying there. I mean that's not a mistake trust me I was in Medida and I was there for nine days and every day I was in Merida in Yucatan I was like I'm leaving I can't take it I could not find anything vegan to eat and every place I would want to travel to the zone was either red or everything was shut down and they just stopped serving food or they would give me one salad with like three pieces you know just an itty bitty piece of lettuce and a tomato like what is that this isn't a game, this is business. My body came to eat, like I'm hungry. And then they would charge me 150 pesos for three pieces of lettuce and a piece of a thick tomato. Like <laughs> That is not the business and expect me to be happy, but I gave you something. So here I don't feel like they're necessarily giving me scraps. There's so much of a cultural hub here uh, from suburbs to everything else. So as I said, I'm nomading. I'm kind of like exploring all these different spaces, going from different neighborhoods, hotels, um, to hotels, hostels, getting to know travelers, a little bit of locals, just so I can really see if I can orient myself, if it's really something that I want to make that stay. I think a lot of times we have these, um, these, these questions uh, and especially in thinking about the next stuff that's about to happen, right? And asking, do you I really want to stay here? If, if stuff goes down, do I want to be there or here? When humanity really gets a hit, do I, do I, where do I want to be? Well, obviously there is no perfect answer to that question. If the heat stops, or let's just say, if there is no more electricity, do, you know if there are going to be huge power outages what's where do you want to be do you want to be somewhere hot where the no fan is going to work on in a in 100 and i mean maybe 75 degrees celsius or 120 degrees fahrenheit do you want to be in a place like that where there's no air conditioning and what about your food it's going to melt or do you want to be in a place that's always freezing that never has heat and you just get used to wearing four pairs of pants and shivering as you go to bed like it's not so easy right <laughs> there's no perfect place to be honest but i feel here is um 
it's a great place where a lot of people do travel in packs. See these kids? Packs. It's a great place to have uh, communities. There's great people, places having families. So, uh, and it's a few hours from the beach. In uh, Puerto Vallarta and Sayulita are only five hours away from here. So, this is really cool. I mean, and taking a bus is not that hard. So, transportation is easy. Although, it's not exactly my first pick of a beach, Oaxaca. <laughs> uh, uh, <clears throat> something was in my throat but uh it's still really cool the state of jalisco is super cool and like the middle of mexico is super cool and i'm just really feeling like this this is a really cool vibe i'm not sure about vibing with mexico city but you know what i'm saying hey all the chilango my my chilango friends out there you know oh yeah no hay problema in serio no hay problema pero aquí es poco mejor in serio es poquito más es, es mejor <laughs> so yeah it's so much better and um yeah it's pretty much it just um i mean finding hair care products look i just i've been got my hair done in so many different colors it was the cheapest i had gotten my hair i always get them in natural but i was like you know what she can do funky this time so um yeah this cost 500 pesos Usually it's 1,500 pesos. When I got my hair done in um, Tijuana, it was 1,500. And then I got it done again in, um, where else did I go? In La Paz. And then I got it done twice when I was in Chiapas. Uh, that cost 1,000 pesos. And then the other one cost 1,200 pesos for cornrows. And the girl really knew what she was doing. Um, but here, 500 pesos, and it took four hours? I mean, <laughs> yo, I'm not trying to say she was undercharging or anything, but when things start getting worse, I think this is like not such a bad place financially to stretch a little, a few dollars. Um, I, I was finding a bit, some of that in Chiapas, but not as much diversity in like travelers and people of like other colors and cultures. It, after a while, it got really dry. I actually started knowing a lot of people who were most unhappy and lonely than they were like feeling fulfilled. So for those reasons, uh, in comparison to everything else, I really enjoyed the beach. I really enjoyed that, but and sometimes it's time for something else. And um, for a little bit, I'm gonna enjoy myself here. So. I really recommend you to come down and see for yourself. You can keep watching as many videos. What's life like in Guadalajara? What's rent? Should I stay in this neighborhood or that? You know, I've been in so many forums and a lot of places where I've lived. And everybody's like, oh, stay in this neighborhood. Oh, Chapultepec. Oh, you should stay in Chiang Mai. Oh, you, but let me just tell you, just stop doing that. The best thing you can do is get a flight for yourself and spend a week or a weekend and then go back and see if you liked it. Maybe you don't even like it. Don't ask people questions for the right neighborhood because maybe they drink a lot and you don't drink. Maybe it's a super old and retired area and you're young and active. So you understand? Asking people's opinions all day is only going to be that, your idea of tons of people's opinions. And like last time I checked, you have a mind of your own. So go to hell if what you're thinking isn't right. This is a quote from Bob Marley. Um, oh my goodness, that buffet. Hoo chow. Okay. But see, these are good problems to have, right? Oh, I'm so full. <laughs> what a great problem to have. So, yes, guys, I really enjoy Guadalajara. It's like falling in love again. I actually picked it the first time because my uh, somebody that I met um, who came in and was couch surfing in Phoenix said he was from Guadalajara. I remember looking at tickets and saying, I'm going to go to Mexico, but I don't even know where I'm going to go. From Phoenix, it's the closest spot, and I can't be in the United States right now. Where am I going to go? And, like... <laughs> I picked Guadalajara and I had a blast. Like, if you read my book, my first 48, 24 hours, I just blew this town up. I was like, drop the mic, hot. It was awesome, it was freaking awesome. So, 
I really love it here. Uh, it's good to be back. It's good to actually experience things in a different light. I came here last time with $200. Just walking to the street the first time to get corn uh, was like, <laughs> it was just like, it was so much. I was so exhausted because I was coming from one culture to another. And I just, I, I wasn't in the place to interact with too many people. After two hours outside, I was really feeling drained. And then I went back home into my, my hotel, which cost $30, which is like 500 pesos, which normally, if you're here, you probably wouldn't pay that anyway. But I would pay my, my 500 pesos and I would go back and rest. Actually, it was like from a hotel credit from a business I was working from when I quit I just kept the credit and booked the booked the hotels which was super nice and so it was cool um, I ended up going back and watching every movie I could find of people who were like interested in living um, and following their dreams so one day I was watching Eat Pray Love the next Under the Tuscan Sun the next, I was just like watching all these inspirational, I'm doing the right thing, right, right? Because it was exhausting, it was so new, it was like so so different for me. I was just like, I don't know, so am I doing the right thing? Oh, obviously, I just I just love it so much, like I had to come back, so. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess so. <laughs> I guess it was great. Um, yeah, you guys, I just so, I love it here. I really, um, there's so much to do from like nature to um, like just within the city itself to all the food, uh, to the different types of people that are here. There's even like Mayan people there. It's just amazing. The beaches are here. It's it's really, um, I, I feel like there's a reason it's so big. <laughs> Uh, there's so much to explore and every time you think you're sick of it you come back and it's like it's a little piece of this, this love that's following you back you're like ah, okay you know I love me some tapatillos all right guys on that note if you see any sauce salsa that says tapatillo just know it came here from Jalisco if you like to drink this is um, the, the town called Tequila is where tequila is born and harvested and this is where they, all the distilleries are. So it's super cool. It's like, it's really amazing. Um, like the home of mariachi is here. It's amazing. So you have really this amazing world. It could be as expensive, as cheap, as um, educational as you want it to be or rough. But yeah, I just love it here. And uh, however long my journey here lasts, for whatever season it is, if it's this season and it's 10 more minutes, 10 days, 10 years, I'm just happy I had the chance to uh, to, get <laughs> to, to be here again and uh, enjoy it. Okay guys, so drop me a comment. Thank you for making it to the end. If you have been here in Guadalajara, let me know. What have, what have you seen? Oh yay. How, check this. Okay, I said, oh yeah, oh yeah, means hey. So uh, there's a place I found facials for two for one, three hundred pesos. Now you can go to the beach in Puerto Vallarta, and it's gonna cost one thousand four hundred pesos, so a little over seventy-five dollars. Or you can get the best, the same facial with all the incredible same machines, just as cheap or cheaper. So it's really cool. There's so much to love, especially like seeing how far you can go really squeezing your money. It's fun. Um, and of course there's splurge days. Definitely fun to have splurge days, but uh, it's it's good to know, right? There's a lot of other things that we're doing with our, with our finances aside from just spending it on uh, things that please us temporarily, food and, um, adventure and feel goody things massages pedicures you know speaking of pedicure um <laughs> yeah there's the cheapest pedicure i found was 60 pesos and um yeah it's in Tapopan. i mean they're all over the place so and this is for hellish gel nails uh yeah cool super cool okay this is guadalajara ah See you guys. Bye.